see new faces in the sanctuary Amen. this morning. Yes, yes. Praise God. I'm telling you, we got this wonderful rain coming down today, but you know, God's got to water the earth. And we're in here this morning, and we're going to get watered, watered in our spirit by the Amen. word of God. How awesome is that? And also today we're taking communion. And so uh, for those of you in our Facebook family, you might want to go ahead and get some elements together. Now, it can be anything, even if it's your cup of coffee and a pancake, you know. God didn't say you had to have. <laughs> All right, Ish says he wants coffee and pancakes. Sounds good to me. Now, I've made everybody hungry. Let's get hungry for the word, okay? Let's, let's get the flesh out of the way here. But you might want to go ahead and, uh, you know, get you some elements. Just put it in a little special cup, maybe on a little special plate. Make, make it a little different, you know. But God sees your heart. And go ahead and prepare your heart and, and your mind to receive communion today. And let's go ahead and just welcome the Lord in. Father God, what an awesome day it is in you. This is the day that you have made, that you have given us, and we are rejoicing in it, Father God. We thank you for the rain that waters the earth, and we thank you for the word that's going to water our heart and our mind today. Holy Spirit, help to clear our heart. Help to clear our eyes so that we can see what God has for us. Help to open our ears so that we hear only the Father. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us this day, just ushering the, the presence of the Lord in. Thank you, angels, that you guard over this service. And for those who are on their way here, Father God, we pray safety over them as you bring them into your house. Father God, we thank you so much for our Oasis family. We thank you for our viewing family. Father God, we thank you that you're knitting us together in cords of love. Father God, how great is your love for us. How awesome is your love for us that you would give us your only son to die on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us so much that in our sin you lay down your life so that we would be sin free. And we just praise your holy name for that. In Jesus' name we come, Father, and give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. All right, well I had a couple of I have a scripture this morning that I that I want to read, and it actually comes from Good Morning, This Is God. And it's a little uh, little devotional from uh, Joyce Meyer, just a little flip chart, but it comes from Ephesians 3, 17 and 19. And uh, the first version is going to be in the common English version, but the second version is the easy to read version. And I just want you to meditate on this. And uh, it starts actually like as a prayer. But love is the foundation. God's love for you is the foundation of your faith. It is for your freedom from sin and your ability to step out and minister and give, give help to others without fear. And these are the scriptures. First, the common English. I ask that Christ will live in our hearts through faith. As a result of having strong roots in love, keep you. I'm sorry, I think it's a, am I getting a, a reverb here? Okay, all right. I'm, all right, we're going to start over. We're going to start over. All right, I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith as a result of having strong roots in love. I ask that you will grasp, have the power to grasp love in it with its width, length, height, and depth together with all believers and I ask that you will know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. And then the easy, the easy to read version was just, it had a little bit more expounding and, and I really liked it. I pray that Christ will live in your hearts because of your faith. I pray that your life will be strong in love and be built on love. And I pray that you always will know as God's holy people that you have the power to understand the greatness of Christ's love, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep that love is. Christ's love is greater than anyone can ever know. But I pray that you will be able to know that love and that you can be filled with everything God has for you. And that's what God has for you is love pure love and we can gather that love when we accept Jesus Christ 
And that's what we want to do. And so if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just go ahead and ask him in. And he will remove your sins from you. And you can walk in love. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, stand and we're going to praise and worship. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. We are glad to have gathered here this morning. Are you glad that you gathered here? <laughs> oh, come on. Let's give the Lord a shout this morning. Glory. 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 We are thankful. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise him? Amen. Yeah. All right. Somebody ready. <laughs>
it's right there, all we have to do is ask. Jesus said, ask anything in the Father's name and he will do it for you or he will give it to you. Hallelujah.
place to rest. And this is what you can do. You can say in your heart, I refuse to be anxious. So when you feel that coming against your heart and your mind, you can say no. It's your choice. You can say no. And then let the Lord move. Because once you do your part, He's going to do His. So rest. Rest.
through the trial, whatever the enemy's coming against you with, he will be right there with you. Yes. Now, a lot of times we don't feel him as strong uh, as we do at other times. But uh -huh. even when we don't feel him strongly, he is there. He is there with us. He never leaves us. And he never forsakes us. And as Patty says, he's victorious. Yes, and he because is. he's victorious, we are victorious. Amen. 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 Give him a hand clap of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're so thankful to have each and every one of you here in the sanctuary today. Uh, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the midst. So he is with us today, amen? amen. And I believe he brought some angels with him, don't you? Amen. 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 And so, and those that are watching by Facebook and YouTube, whatever form of media you're watching us by, we welcome you also. We're so honored amen. to have you today. And we invite you just to join in with what God has for you. He has something for each and every one of us today. And so we're going to be receptive, aren't we? Amen. We're going to receive what he has for Amen. us today. Amen. Amen. And so as we always do, I want to, I'm going to do our confession a little bit different this morning. This comes from Joel Osteen, and I love his confessions. He, he always confesses the word, and he does it so positively. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he gives us what the word of God says we can have and what we can do and who we are in him. Amen. Amen. And so, but this morning, I'm going to um, speak a, a word of confession, and then I want you to repeat it after me. Amen? Amen. So I declare, I am blessed. I, I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am prosperous. I am successful. I am successful. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am talented. I am talented. I am creative. I am creative. I am wise. I am wise. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am in good shape. I am in good shape. I am energetic. I am energetic. I am happy. I am happy. I am positive. I am positive. I am I am passionate. I am strong. I am strong. I am confident. I am confident. I am secure. I am secure. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. God, you are attractive. <laughs> I know y'all didn't want to say I am beautiful. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I am valuable. I am valuable. I am free. I am free. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am Given. I am forgiven. I am anointed. I am anointed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, God. I know we're doing it just a tad, a tad different on the service this morning as we're feeling led, like with the communion and everything. Um, okay, the main thing that I need to remind everybody of um, before Pastor Sharon prays over the, the rest of the service is that utterance, y'all heard me say it over and over and over and over, utterance is greatly affected by the hearers. Mm -hmm. So if you want something from God, you want a word from God, I promise you, God will get you that word. He'll open you up, yes. even through something that we don't say, you'll get an answer that you've been praying about. Or something that we do say, we'll be divinely directed to say something that you need personally. I'm telling you, all you've got to do is make a drawing on the anointing. When you make that drawing, it's just like sitting down to a Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to sit down and you're going to make a drawing on that food. You're going to, you're going to fill up on that food. And I'm telling you, if you'll fill up and you'll, you'll be hungry for the food today, utterance will be greatly affected in this place and answers will come. Amen. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for the honor and the privilege to come into your house today and to gather together in your name, Lord God. And Lord, we just give this service to you, Father God. We just yield our hearts and our minds to you, Father, our ears. We have a listening ears today, Father God. Our spirit receives what you have for us this day. And we thank you for your anointing upon Pastor as he ministers the word, ministers the word and on each uh, part of this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. The title of the message today is, God has given you fresh hope. Nice. Get you in your Bibles, we're going to go to Proverbs 23 and 18. And I'm going to read out of the Amplified. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to read out of the Passion. How about that? The Passion Translation. Your future is bright and filled with a living hope that will never fade away. 
I like that. Yes. Now, I don't know if y'all have noticed there's a pattern that the enemy does against us. I know he's used it against me many times. And uh, he likes to get our hopes up and then he smashes them. Uh -huh. yeah. So that we will feel hopeless. And that's a pattern that he tries to work in many different areas of our lives. Because discouragement destroys hope. So the enemy tries to discourage and extinguish all of our hope until all hope is gone. Because hope, you know, a lot of times hope in the in churches today has got a bad rap. We think, well, you know, you shouldn't be saying, well, I'm going to have great hope about this situation. You should be saying, I'm going to have great faith about this situation. But the Word of God says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah. Hope is the goal setter. If you don't have hope, you're not going to enter into faith. So we need hope. And if the devil can get us at the level of hope to extinguish that hope, he can destroy us. See, there's a lot of people that have quit, just completely quit life because their hope got extinguished. They didn't have a hope for tomorrow. They didn't have a hope that something better could happen to them, no matter what their current circumstances are. And the Lord wants to build up our hope. He wants us reaching out in hope. And it, Amen. Amen. Hope Amen. is just like it ignites our faith. For a turnaround, for a breakthrough. Yes. I don't know if, if any of y'all have ever started a fire. Yeah. Like in a fireplace and not talking about burning something down. Doing something that you shouldn't be doing. I'm, I'm hoping that is not the case. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll let that pass here. I'll be doing it. She has started a couple of things in the house. And, uh, the kitchen is no big deal. And the iron, never mind, never mind. I'm, I'm, I'm off, off, off track. Okay. But I don't know if y'all ever use fat lighter. Y'all know what fat lighter is. Fat lighter has got that sap in it and it's dried up a little bit. And, and you light that and you put it on the twigs and you put it on the logs. And wow, I mean, you, you, you put them around it and it just catches just like that if you've got fat lighter. And that's what hope does yeah. on the inside of us. When we've got a good, godly hope, that's and God good. is placed there, and we don't let the enemy take it. We don't let him smash it to smithereens like he likes to do, because that's his plan. But we say, no, I'm holding on to my hope. Maybe I'm not over there in faith the way I should be yet, but I got hope. I got hope for a better tomorrow. I got hope this situation is going to turn around. I got hope, and that's going to turn into faith, and that's what the enemy is afraid of. Because yeah. it's going to be just like fat lighters. It's going to catch that fire going. And then you're going to get a turnaround and a breakthrough. Oh, hallelujah. Hope hallelujah. starts to fire in us. And to overcome hopelessness, we're going to need to fix our thoughts. And we're going to have to focus on the good. Now, <clears throat> the enemy tries to get us to focus on hopelessness. He gets us there in our bodies. He'll, he'll put pain in your body. And he'll give you a bad doctor's report. And he'll tell you it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. And he'll use that. Or he'll he'll get put pain in your mind. Mental anguish. How I many of y'all have ever had mental anguish come against uh -huh. you? Yes. That's everybody in this place, I'm sure. Uh -huh. And pain in your emotions, grief, hurt, rejection, guilt. We've all been through these things. And the enemy wants us to get stuck in those areas so that we lose our hope. Uh -huh. The enemy will try to use people. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope he's not talking about you. I hope he's not talking about you. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't say that with any conviction. <laughs> the reason y'all didn't say it with any conviction, yeah, he's used that one again. Never mind, never mind. Never mind. Because sometimes we disappoint each other. Amen. Sometimes Amen. people say nasty things about us yes. and believe the worst about us sometimes. Yes. And if we focus on the ugly comments, we will lose our hope. Amen. So we have to get our hope from God. And we won't be hopeless. That's Psalms 39 and 7 in the Passion. And now God, I'm left with one conclusion. My only hope is to hope in you alone. So sometimes life can make us hopeless. And we wonder if we'll ever have hope again. Because the enemy uses one of his patterns is the pilot pattern. I don't know if y'all have ever had this happen in your life. But um, the air condition breaks down. Then the refrigerator breaks down, the dishwasher breaks down, the car breaks down, the battery goes out. I'm telling you one thing after another, and you're like, 
you know, I can handle this one at a time, but this, this pylon method, and that's what he does to get us yes. discouraged, and, and yes. he's working against our hope. Because yes. he knows yes. that hope is going to be like that fat lighter, and it's going to yes. like that turnaround. Yes. It's going yes. to mess him up. Yes. So he's got to get us over out of the area of hope uh -huh. into hopelessness. He's trying to crush us with this pylon method so we don't have any hope. Now, Isaiah 40 and 31, this is the Amplified. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him will gain new strength and renew their power. Now, I want to read it in the uh, Passion Translation, same scripture. But those who entwine their hearts with Yahweh will experience divine strength. They will rise up on soaring wings and fly like eagles and run their races without growing weary and walk through life. Here we go. Without giving up. I love that. Because sometimes we want to give up. Right. Sometimes yeah. the enemy has used the pile on method so much, we want to quit. We want to walk away. Yeah. We want to give up. Yeah. Hope helps us not to give up. Hope gives us strength to keep going. Hope pulls us forward. There was a, a man and his, his father, there was a man that used to go here and do lots and lots of stuff here. The, the man's name was Wayne McAllister. He did so yeah. much building in this, in this particular building. But his father, many years ago, um, he was a gang warden, and um, he had uh, retired, and they were going to name a bridge, they were going to honor him with the name of a bridge after him. They were going to have a, a ceremony and, you know, name the bridge after him or whatever. But he had been diagnosed with, uh, you know, he, he was passing away. Mm -hmm. He was in the stages of, of dying. And they didn't think that the date they had set, that he'd still be alive when they're going to dedicate the bridge. So it's on, they're thinking only his relatives will be there. But he really wanted to see that bridge dedication, and he really wanted to be there because that was about his life's work. He was a game warden, and he didn't just do the game warden stuff. He helped people, families that needed food and just different things. He was always helping people. And it was honoring his life's work. Well, um, they didn't think he could make it, but he did mm -hmm. because hope, Pulled him forward. Yes. Yes. You say, yes. hope can't make you live longer. I can assure you it will. Yes. You can live longer if you have hope for tomorrow. Yes. Yes. And you'll live without hope for tomorrow. Yes. Amen. And he did. Amen. He saw the, the bridge. He was there at the ceremony. And then he died. He passed away a few days after that. Wow. But hope in God pulled him forward. Hope in God or a better tomorrow that God will give us will pull us forward also. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I want more hope in my life. Yes. Amen. I mean it. I need it. And God God gives us good news, and that gives us hope. And I know Ish is uh, probably, I know something would come to his mind when I'm saying this. A lot of times when me and Pastor Sharon and, and Ish will be going over things and do it every week and just different things we'll say. And one of the comments that I make to Ish or we make to Ish all the time is, Ish. If you get any good news, I don't care what it is, any good news, do you understand me, Ish? Any good news, call us, text us, make sure we get to hear good news. If you've got good news, we want to know it immediately. You understand? Sometimes people are quick, not, not him, but some, a lot of times people are quick to give, you, give us bad news, but not good news. We, we want the good news. Let me show you what the good news will do. It'll give us hope. Proverbs 15 and 30, Common English Bible, it says it strengthens the bones. Yes. In the Good News Bible, it says, that same scripture, it makes you feel better. In the New English Translation, it says, good news gives health to the body. The Berean Study Bible says, good news nourishes the bones. So that's about the marrow. Yeah. Proverbs 15 and 30 in the message, good news makes you feel fit as a fiddle. I like that translation. It'll make you fit, feel as fit as a fiddle. How many of y'all feel fit as a fiddle this morning? Some of y'all, some of y'all do, and some of y'all, your strings are broke on the fiddle. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna restring some fiddles this morning, okay? We're gonna give you some hope, and by the time you leave today, your fiddles gonna be gonna be filled with a fiddle because your fiddles are gonna be restrung. Hallelujah. <laughs> Proverbs fifteen and thirty again: Bright eyes gladden the heart. Good news puts fat on the bones. Right now. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. He's talking about rich, this fullness. That's what he's talking about. I just thought I'd clarify that a little. 
Proverbs 25 and 25 says, like cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a distant land. That's good. Proverbs 15 and 30, the passion, eyes that focus on what is beautiful bring joy to the heart. Get this, and hearing a good report refreshes, listen, and strengthens the inner being. I love that. That's good. On the inside of us, when we hear good news and a good report, we focus on that, not the bad news that we hear everywhere. But if we focus on the good news, the good things God's doing, we focus on the good, you know, Proverbs tells us that. I mean, uh, Philippians tells us that in Philippians 4. But if we focus on the good, it's going to strengthen us. It's going to strengthen our inner being and refresh us. Amen. So good news gives us hope. So to build our hope and keep our hope, we must focus on the good. Because hopelessness causes discouragement and depression. Hopelessness stops forward motion. Hopelessness is, is a thought that comes to all of us. What's the use? Hopelessness makes us want to give up. Now, when I feel hopelessness try to come on me. Now, first of all, let me, let me see who I'm preaching to. I'll make sure everybody's on the bus. How many of y'all have ever had hopelessness try to come on you? Okay, so that's everybody in this place. Sometimes the enemy's done that pilot method and he's trying to, to make hopelessness come on me. When it happens to me, and it's happened to me many times in our, our lives and in my life, it drives me deeper in the word and in prayer because I'm not strong enough on my own to handle it. I can't do it. I need God's help. I need his strength. I need him to give me fresh hope. Sometimes the Lord will just give me a word. <laughs> I remember, okay. When we were doing the home group many years ago, I had got discouraged about the home group. I just didn't feel like um, it just wasn't doing what I thought it should do. You know, a lot of times we just get wrong thought patterns and, and we're not in line with what God's thoughts are, you know. And, and so that was the case. And it was it was very discouraging to me. And, and uh, we were fixing to go on vacation. We had this home group that later turned into this church, by the way. But we had this home group. And uh, I made the mention to Pastor Sheridan and, and uh, to our father-in-law and mother-in-law. I told them, I said, I'm going to close the home group down when we get back off vacation. And we'll do another week or so, and then we're going to close it down. And uh, I said that. I said that without prayer. You know, a lot of times we say things without yes, prayer. Yes. We then, uh, I know none of y'all do, but please pray for Pastor because he needs all the prayer that he can get. But anyway, I, I said that. And then... We went on this vacation. It was into the mountains in Gatlinburg, and um, I got a word, and it was from the Word of God. He gave me a, a scripture in Isaiah, and it just jumped off the page at me. And he was, he said, this, this small group, one of the translations, this small group will become a mighty nation. This small group, one of the translations says it'll be a mighty church. And I knew that was the desire for God, but I, I was very discouraged about it. See, if the enemy can get you at the point. Of discouragement, it takes away your hope, yes. which will ignite your yes. faith. Yes. Which, if I'd have shut it down back then, we yes. wouldn't have had you people, the relationships we've had, and all the great things God has done through the years. But see, he has to, he has to stop it at a small point. He has to, he has to attack us and attack us and attack us because he can see the handwriting on the wall. It's gonna bust his head. It's, it's, it's gonna bust him because I, I'm telling you. Amen. Hallelujah. So. For me personally, it drives me, that, that, that word just blew up on the inside of me. And matter of fact, when we, we got back, I said, we're not closing it down. We're getting more chairs. <laughs> we're, we're not even filling the people the chairs that we got. But the Lord, you know, really impressed me, get more chairs. And we got more chairs. And then we had two different groups of people come that night that we didn't know they were coming. We didn't even know how they, they found out from somebody else. And they wound up filling all these chairs and it was like, Glory to God. This is that that was a word from God. Fresh, he gave me fresh hope. And it, it helped me continue. Because if you keep hope in front of you, you'll keep going. If you keep hope in front, that's the reason we need each other in the body of Christ. Because you get isolated and the devil will whoop you every time. Because you'll start listening to your own thoughts. You'll then you'll get discouraged, you'll get depressed. And you'll be the Long Ranger without Tonto. Amen. And you know what? There would only be one episode of the Long Ranger if he hadn't had Tonto. Tonto pulled that boy's fat out of the fire every week. Every week. If it hadn't been for Tonto, the Long Ranger was dead. He was dead every week he was dead. But because of Tonto. See, you're sitting by Tonto today. You're sitting by somebody that's going to pull your fat out of the fire. They're going to say, you, 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 you 
Yeah, you're thinking wrong. You got to stop thinking like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you. And then you're connected. You're hooked up. Yes. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 15 and 4 in the passage says, The scriptures impart to us encouragement and inspiration so that we can live in hope and endure all things. I'm not saying it's Pollyanna and, and we're never going to go through anything. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But what I'm saying is we can endure it because of hope. Yes. Amen. 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 Mm. If he can, the enemy can get us into hopelessness, he can destroy us. Mm -hmm. If the enemy can get us and keep us into hopelessness, he can destroy us. Amen. I'm going to quote you a line from a, from a movie from years ago. Um, it just popped up when I was studying, not the movie, but the, the thought of this, this thought. There's one line in this movie, and it says, uh, hope is a good thing. And, you know, they're in prison, and this one guy is thinking he's never going to get out. And this other guy is believing he has hope that he is going to get out, even though he was wrongly in prison. Everybody else around him was in prison correctly, but this guy was in prison wrongly, and he still believed there was, there was going to be a way out. He had hope. So hope is a good thing. Yeah. And the scripture says in Hebrews 10 and 23, so now wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. Get this, Hebrews 6, 19. And I, I didn't do all the scriptures today. I know y'all love scriptures. Say that. We, I we love, love scriptures. Yeah. Love yeah. Yeah. Pastor Sharon told us this the other day. Y'all yes, love scriptures. Y'all say it again. I love, I love the scriptures. Love the scriptures. The scriptures. Okay. And uh, Hebrews 6, 19 in the Passion, we have this certain hope. Like a strong, unbreakable anchor yes. holding our souls to God Himself. Yes. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold. Mm, that's good. <clears throat> We're anchored to God. Psalms 27 and 14, and in this portion, I'm, I'm fixing to be prayer. Here's, here's what I've learned through it all don't give up. Don't be impatient. Impatience causes me to give up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right before I, I see them through the reward. Many times in my life, I can see where impatience has messed me up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, keep on waiting for he will never disappoint you. Hallelujah. That's Psalms 27 and 14 in the Passion. Now I know that uh, Pastor Sherry is going to come up in, a, in just a few minutes. And she's going to lead us into communion. And um, I know we're doing a little different today. But one of the things that we like to do in our communion when the Lord allows it and when we have the proper time to do it is we like to kind of set you believing for something when you're taking the communion. Not just as a religious exercise, Amen. but that you actually put your faith on something. So I'm going to read you a few things before she comes up. Now, this is Psalm 65 and 11. I told y'all, this scripture, um, it, it just popped up and it just went alive in my spirit back in October of this year. I heard Jerry Savelle mention it. And then I did a word study on this Psalm 65 and 11. And this is in the easy to read version. You start the new year. That's where we are. You start the new year with a good harvest. You end the year with many crops. Now, that scripture has given me great hope and expectation for this coming year. I can tell you. Yeah. I'm going to give you another version. This is New Living. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Mm -hmm. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. So we're starting this year with a bountiful harvest, an overflowing harvest. Um, and definitions are a large harvest, a large amount, a rich harvest, a prosperous harvest. And it being provided for. We're starting this year being provided for by God in a bountiful way. Um, and it gives me great hope and expectation every time I, I read that. And I, I'm reading that scripture a lot. I've got it before my eyes an awful lot. So this is the year, one of the things for us this year, I'm talking about as a church and as people and families of the church, is for us, one of the things is this is the year of the bountiful harvest. Amen. This is the year, as Kenneth Copeland prophesied, of more and more and more. Now, Hallelujah. this year, 2024, is different for us. This is our year. Now, 
I know it's all I tell you all week. And I know that um, we were talking about it a few weeks ago, just as in passing, we were talking about this year. And uh, as he was uh, walking off, he said, this is my year. Uh-huh. And it just exploded uh-huh. in my spirit. I said, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. And he yeah. said, yeah, this is my year. Yeah. And then the other day he came up to me again while I was talking to somebody else. And he said, this is my year. I said, no, it's my year too. It's my year. It's your year. It's my year too. You know what? This is my year. This is your year. you got to start saying that. This is your year. It's going to make hope rise up and connect. That hope's going to be that fat lighter. And it's going to ignite. Things that happened for you this year, but never before. This is our year for the church and for all the people and the families of the church. The Lord gave Pastor Sharon a word. This was several weeks ago. And it says, God is saying, she posted this on Facebook. This is a breakthrough year. Breakthrough in your finances. Breakthrough in your health. Breakthrough in your relationship. Relationships. God is breaking through for you. Another thing that I'm believing for specifically for this year is that we are always in the right place at the right time. Yes. And we are experiencing that like never before. I mean, I mean, we say that all the time, but we're experiencing it all the time. Yes. We had we, we drove up somewhere the other day, and the first thing they said, wow, y'all came in the right time. Uh-huh. And we went somewhere else that uh, uh-huh. it was a little uh, dollar point or whatever, and, and this place is flooded with people every time we've ever been there to have a test. And it wasn't flooded with people. There's nobody there. We thought the place was flooded. <laughs> we were in the right place at the right time. You know we're always in the right place. Always in the right place at the right time. And we meet the right people. We have the right connections. We have favor wherever we go. Okay, now, again, Psalm 65 and 11. This is in the Net Bible. You crown the year with your good blessings. Get this. And you leave abundance in your wake. Abundance. Abundance. So now I'm going to ask you some questions. Is it possible? These are faith producing questions. Is it possible that a dream that you had, but you let it go, is it possible that God, your God, could resurrect it this year? Is it possible? Is it in the realm of possibility? Is it possible that God has miracles in store for you this year? Yes. And for your family. Is it possible? Yes. yes, it's possible, and he does. Is it possible that a situation that you prayed about and stood in faith for and couldn't work out, but it works out easily and effortlessly and quickly this year? Yes. Is it possible that your health could take a turn for the better? Yes. Is it possible that God, your God, could you give you the desires of your heart this year? Yes. Is it possible? To have the best year that you've ever had up to this point. Yes. I, I know it's mine. I don't know if it's y'all, but I know it's mine. This is my year. This is my year. This is our church year. This is the year. Is it possible to go to new levels of favor this year? Is it in the realm of possibility? Is it possible that you could get a raise this year? Yes. Is it possible that you could get a bonus this year? Yes. Is it possible God could bless you unexpectedly yes. this year? Yes. Even yes. though your faith's not on it, God gives you a happy yes. surprise. Yes. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 and 8 in the free Bible version says, The Lord will bless your income and everything you do. I'm sorry, this is mine. This belongs to me. Oh, Antonio was saying it's his. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else it belongs to them. Okay, different ones are saying it. It's mine. It's, it's mine. mine. Okay. It's mine. Is it possible that a relationship that has been strained for years yes. could be completely yes. made yes. new yes. by God's yes. grace and God's yes. power yes. this year? Is yes. it possible? This year, glory to God. I believe that this year for our church will be a, a year of supernatural restoration. I believe this year, I believe, I believe this, that we're going to accomplish 10 years, 10 years in one year. I believe we're going to make such strides this year, it's going to be a complete turnaround. We're going to go 10 years, 10 years. God's going to redeem time. He's going to redeem time in your life. I'm telling you, time that the enemy has stolen from you, time that the enemy has stolen from your relationship. God is going to redeem your time this year. One year can you 10 years back. Yeah. It's not possible. It is possible. It, it won't be possible if you don't believe it, but you've got to 
Okay? Put your faith out there. Put your hope out there. Get the fat lighter going, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I personally believe God will restore more and more and more. I believe obstacles are hurrying out of our way. I believe this year God is doing a quick work, a rapid turnaround. Is it possible that you're, everything that you're believing for could happen quickly? Yeah. If it could happen slowly, it could happen quickly. Yeah. Does it ever happen slowly? Yeah. Then it could happen quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God hastens his word to perform it yeah. in my 1 and 12. I'm expecting, I'm believing. This year will be the best year this church has ever had. Yeah. So yeah. far. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So be it. Glory yeah. to God. I believe that our church will have a greater measure of favor than we've ever had before yeah. this year. I believe our set time has come. Yeah. I believe we have waited the enemy out, and now he can't stop. He can't, he can't prolong it. He can't delay it anymore. Sometimes you get into those set times, and he can do nothing but watch God He's going to watch the way God comes in. He's going to watch that surprise is happening. I'm telling you, our set time has come. A rapid healing, a quick Hallelujah. healing. Hallelujah. God will quickly yes. move your enemies out of your way. Yes. That child you've been praying for, Woo. there's a quick turnaround in your future. Come on. Come on, Come on, I'm believing for my bountiful harvest. Yeah. I'm believing for increase in every area. Hallelujah. More and more and more. Hallelujah. The year of progressing. The year of advancing, yes. the year of promotion, yes. the year of Glory seeing our highest expectations Glory fulfilled. Yes. Everybody say it. This is my year. This is my year. This is my year. This is my year. My set time has come. If you believe it, shout. Please do that. 
He's already done it. Yes, he's yes, already yes, done yes. it. So we've got to get the revelation uh, 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 deeper on the inside of us. That we realize, you know, we don't have to beg God. We can just thank Him. Amen. Thank Him that He has already done it for us. And, so the, uh, and the greatest thing um, that He did for us was salvation. Amen. Amen. So let's remember, first of all, yes. the salvation that he went to the cross, that we can live with him forever and ever. Invite, just invite him into your heart. Amen. And confess him as Lord and Savior of your life. And in that, and if you're sincere, that is all it takes yes. to be a Christian, yes. to live for the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. You know, uh, we humans like to. We like to make things difficult. Yes, we do. <laughs> and I'm guilty all the time, you know. But um, it's not difficult. It is no. easy. He has made it it's so easy. Yes. Amen. And, and isn't that an awesome thing yes. that he did for us? Amen. And, you know, let's just remember today, um, you know, he gave us peace. Yes. He Amen. suffered on the cross. He took you know, our agony, our anxiety, our fears, our worries. He took all of that on the cross. That We don't have to carry those things. He carried it for us. So as we take communion today, let's just be mindful. Put these things in remembrance of everything that Jesus did for us. Anything that you can think of. Anything that the enemy has ever come against you with. Just remember today, Jesus took care of it already. Amen. He already did it. And it, isn't he a wonderful Lord? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we can live the abundant life. Thank you. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer before we begin. Lord Jesus, we just come to you today, Father God, thanking you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Father God, for, for salvation, first of all. We thank you, Lord, for that, that you provided for us, that we can live with you for eternity. We thank you, Lord God, for the blood that you shed for us, Lord. Thank you for the stripes, Father God, that you, that you took, that Jesus took for us, that we can be healed. Thank you for everything that Jesus took on the cross for us, that we can have the abundant life, Lord, that we can walk in freedom, and that we can have that hope that Pastor talked about today, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Jesus is hope. And we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you will, I'll get the ushers to go ahead and pass out the elements today. And Ken, you can put something low background music on if you will. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for his word. Thank the Lord that his word is so encouraging, so uplifting, and it is true. Praise God. remembering all that Jesus did for us. Thank you, Lord. We are so thankful today. So thankful for all that you've done for us. Thank you that you went to the cross for our salvation, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you took those stripes for our healing. Thank you, Lord, that you took poverty, Father God, and gave us prosperity. Thank you, Lord. You are a good, good father. God, you are so awesome and so wonderful. We praise you, Lord. We thank you and we glorify you, Lord. Thank you that we have peace today. Because of what you did on the cross, we have peace. Thank you that you just fill us with your peace, Lord. Daily.
Thank you, Lord. Our bodies can be at peace. Thank you, Lord. Because of you. Because of all that you've taken for us for your death on the cross for us. The sacrament you took for us for all of us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for us. First Corinthians 11 and 23, this is the NIV, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. Has everybody got their bread and the juice this morning? Okay, First Corinthians 11 and 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can now partake of the bread. Thank you. First Corinthians 11.25 It says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. You may partake of the cup. is a form of thanksgiving and we just thank you for this morning and we praise him this morning thank you Lord for this new covenant thank you God we don't take it lightly Father we rejoice in everything that you did for us showing us what a good Lord you are showing you showing us that you love us with an everlasting love Father we don't take it lightly. We, we, we adore you, Father, and we thank you for everything that you've done for us. And we praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you. remind everybody a couple of weeks ago that pastor had um, spoken about sowing a seed for the for the year for 2024 and you know I had um, explained that you know I, Pat, when we got home pastor asked me you know what what did I want to set the seed concerning what did I want to, to plant seed for and at first I was like I don't know you know I hadn't really uh, prayed about it. So he said, let's pray about it for a while. So we did. And uh, things just started coming up in my spirit that, you know, for us to plant a seed um, for these things for 2024. And so, you know, I had just, you know, I can't even remember what all it was. But, um, you know, of course, I want more blessings, you know, financial blessings, blessings in my home, blessings in my family, you know, just so many things that, um, God wants for us. Yes. Amen. He wants these things for us. And as uh, Juan said a week or two ago, he said, plant a seed for your need. Yes. And so that's what we're doing. We are planting seeds for any need that we might have in 2024 because, you know, uh, the Lord will rebuke the devourer for yes. our sakes. Yes. And so I stand on the word of God. 
you know, that God is going to take care of us as a family. He's going to take care of Oasis Christian Center. Yes, you know, that's, you know, we cover the church too in our, in, in our seed and cover our families and, and, you know, our stuff. Have you got stuff? <laughs> Amen. We've all got stuff. And so we planted a special uh, seed for the, for those things in 2024. And so I uh, know some people had forgotten about doing that last week. And uh, so if that's you, we wanted to give you an opportunity to do that today. You know, if you or if you're prepared to do that today, give a special offering for that uh, seed to cover 2024 with the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. So if you're not prepared, I wanted to add this too. If you're not pre uh, prepared today, you can give it a, another time. Amen. Amen. Whenever you can. Cover this year, 2024, amen, amen. with the blessings of God. Yes, Lord. Praise amen. the Lord. Give him another hand clap of praise. That's what I'm sowing my seed for. And I just, I just, I challenge you today as we, first of all, I know you all, we all got good God believing people. And I noticed, I noticed we're all faithful people we're respecting to receive because I know there are people, and we all know there are people too, that would have seen the cold and rain this morning and said, no, sir, I'm just sticking in the bed this morning. Uh, I'm putting on uh, my favorite stories is coming on, I think at 10, 30, 11 o'clock. <laughs> He turned to me and he came, uh, like the Bible said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house. Go, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we came into the Lord for the yeah. assembly's day. And I thank God for you all doing that. And I know the Lord loves to see you in here in this house this morning. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I am believing for going into this year for a victory. For a victory. It's so, it's so amazing that, it's so amazing that this came a part in my spirit because this past week I was struggling to find it myself. I was struggling to find time to myself to speak through some few things that went on for me on my job this week, and I was feeling down. And I had to be reminded of myself that, hey, this is temporarily, but your, your relationship with your God, your relationship with the Father, that's forever. You know? Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God forever stands. So I thank God that no matter what I went through on Tuesday or going into Wednesday and Thursday, I still have his word that I can go to. So God, Pick me up, clean me up. I need a recharge. I need a supercharge. I need to get back going yes. because this day was tough. God, they said this about me. They told me to do this. Uh, this person held up my time, and I felt like they would take it from me. So, God, big brother Jesus, I need some help. Yes. I need a recharge. So, Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for the victory. And I challenge you as you sow your seed, as you plant whatever seed you plant today, you know, we give the tithe. But for whatever you need and what believing for, I'm going to echo it again for what you're believing for into 2024. The year is now just a month old. We still got a little more to go as we wrap up January, getting to February now. We're believing to see it to come to pass. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's dreams, yes. there's goals, there's jobs. Yes. We want to see our loved ones. Yes. Prosper and healing. Yes. Whatever we may need, we're believing for that in 2024. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. So I'm not going to hold us up any further. I thank God for also the community this morning. I'm going to go ahead and get into the confession. Amen. If we're all, uh, repeat after me. 
As I tie and give offering, as I tie and give offering, I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. Jobs and better jobs. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Raises and bonuses. Benefits. Benefits. Sales and commissions. Sales and commissions. Favorable settlements. Favorable settlements. Estates and inheritances. Estates and inheritances. Interest and income. Interest and income. Rebates and returns. Rebates and returns. Discounts and dividends. Discounts and dividends. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Bills decreased. Bills decreased. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For meeting all of my financial needs. For meeting all of my financial needs. That I may now have. To give it to the kingdom of God. To give it to the kingdom of God. Both the gospel of Jesus Christ. And both the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory. 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 I apologize for those out in Facebook and YouTube that just had to see the back of my head. I I just found it out. So we're going to go into the the ways to give. uh, Just to remind you all to how you can sow into the ministry. Uh, For those in the building, of course, and for those watching, whatever way you may be watching, you go to osbhub.com forward slash Oasis Family Church forward slash giving forward slash funds. Uh, my personal favorite, what I do most often these days, I go to www.paypal.me forward slash Oasis Family Church. There's the option to text to give. You know, we're in the cell phone age now. 334-274-7885. Uh, you can also go to the church's website, www.oasisfamilychurch.net. Or you can go to Cash App and enter dollar sign Oasis Family Church. Uh, the first words of that, are, uh, first letters of the words are all capital, capital O, A S I S, capital F A M I L Y, capital C C H U R C H. You can also mail your donations to P.O. Box 246, for Station, Alabama 36877. And of course, the good old-fashioned traditional way. I don't mean to say that, you know. I don't mean to say that to put it down, but you know, the, the way we've always given us to show up, fellowship with us. Yeah, amen. Yeah. 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 I heard someone say, <laughs> and so you see him here with us. But praise God. With all things being said, we're going to get to turn it over for the closeout. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Juan. And thank you, pastors. Yes. I'm telling you, that was such anointing on every word that came out of your mouth. You could just like see. I mean, I don't know if y'all did, but I saw the glory of God come through pastors' words. I mean, it was just like you could read it coming out of his mouth. It was just so clear. And we do have hope. In 2024, we have hope for right now. I woke up this morning and I said, God, if I don't have anything else to thank you for, I thank you that I got one more day to try again. Amen. Amen. One Amen. more day. One more time Amen. to try again. Amen. And I know that in God, we know that in God, everything is possible. Yes. So we don't lose hope. And I love the scripture that Pastor had. I'm going to read it again. Proverbs 25 and 25. Eyes focused on the good, what is beautiful, brings joy to the heart. And hearing a good report refreshes and strengthens our inner being. So that's what we want for each and all of us want for each other. And we want it also for our church family that is out on Facebook or wherever. We want you to come in. Like Juan says, we want to see your face. Because we do. We need each other. We need that physical touch. If we didn't need it, God wouldn't have, you know, sent us Jesus to show us how to walk and to talk and to, to be with one another. So let's go ahead and thank the Lord for this word today. Father God, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that's interpreted. We thank you that each and every one of us, Father God, receive today what you have for us, Father God. We thank you that we have hope and that nothing is impossible with you, Father God. We thank you that your word is yes and amen to the promises. So, Father, we take hold this week. And we speak over 2024 that this is our breakthrough year. This is our year for restoration. This is our year for victory. And we praise you in all of it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I do have one announcement. We are having movie night. It is going to be Life Mark. It is um, 
the Kendricks brothers, they put this movie together. We're going to have it on Wednesday evening for our Wednesday service. That is on the 21st. We're also going to be having popcorn and, uh, and nachos. And so we're just going to have a family fellowship night on Wednesday night. Let's praise the Lord for that. Thank you for Pastor's vision on this. We have a, wrap, uh, a door prize, too, but you have to be here. Right. All right. I remember Chrissy telling me, she said, you need to remember this. Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> we are having a door prize. Okay, we're going to dangle that carrot, little horse. You know, so you can, like, don't look to the left or the right. Get yourself in here. But you have to be here. You can't sneak out early or, you know, what a, yeah, it's at the end. So you check out. You gotta stay. You gotta wait till the very, very last minute. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing everyone. Thank you for those joining us on Facebook, and God bless.